Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah nabiyana Muhammad wa amin wa So in our series of uh, short videos uh, as it relates to Imam Ibn Qayyim's Islamic library in Newark, New Jersey, one of the questions we received was where did the idea come from? Where did the idea come from? So this, uh, this concept of an Islamic library is something which is very common in Muslim countries. Uh, in the history of Islam, something which is very, very common. Uh, Imam Ibn Hajar, Imam Ibn Hajar mentioned that Imam Ibn Qayyim had a enormous library. Imam Ibn Qayyim, rahmatullahi, rahmatullahi alayhi, had an enormous library. And the same was mentioned by Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, Imam Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, about Ibn al-Jawzi, about Ibn al-Jawzi, and I don't mean Ibn, Ibn Qayyim al-Jawzi, I mean Ibn al-Jawzi, Abu al-Faraj, who is about 200 years before Ibn al-Qayyim. Imam Ibn al-Taymiyyah uh, mentioned that Ibn al-Jawzi had a tremendous library, and he wrote so many books, and to the extent that Ibn al-Taymiyyah mentioned that Ibn al-Jawzi wrote more than a thousand books. He authored more than a thousand books. So. Having an Islamic library, whether it's uh, outside of the home or whether it's in the home, is something which is old uh, and it's a part of Islamic history as it relates to learning, as it relates to learning. And uh, like we mentioned in a recent uh, article that Sheikh al-Albani, rahmatullahi alayhi, used to spend between 8 to 12 hours in the public library, in the public library. And uh, Sheikh Muqbal, rahmatullahi alayhi, in his biography, it's mentioned that he, every single day, uh, I believe it was after his, after Fajr and after his first lesson and after his breakfast with his family, he would go to the library and stay there till close to Dhuhr. Stay there close to, to Dhuhr. So doing research, reading and authoring and the likes. Um, in Saudi Arabia, as well as Egypt, as well as Syria, as well as uh, Yemen, as well as Morocco, Muslim countries, the, the, the public library, the Islamic public library is known. It's known. So this concept of an Islamic library is not something which is foreign. It may be something which is foreign in the Mus in the, the West, but it's not foreign in, in the Islamic society. So we want to bring that back. We want to bring that back. We want to bring that to, to, uh, to the West. We want to bring that to our community. And what's surprising is that the, the U.S. government and the Library of Congress, they have an Islamic section. They have an Islamic section with Arabic books, with English books. All the books of Sheikh al-Albani are in the Library of Congress. All the books of Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah in the Library of Congress. All the books of Ibn Rajab, Ibn Qayyim, right? Uh, the books of Imam Ahmed, all of those books are in the Library of Congress. So does the Library of Congress have more right to our Islamic heritage than us? While our children are on their devices and are on their phones and on TikTok this time? Come on, let's get our children back into, let's help our children, our, our, ourselves and our children, understand the importance of this Islamic heritage. So that's um, something. Another thing is, uh, this is very common in Saudi Arabia and in, in the Prophet's Masjid, as well as in Mecca, in the Haram in Mecca. They have large, huge Islamic libraries. And the students of knowledge, whether in Mecca or in uh, Medina or in Riyadh or the likes, they spend many hours doing their research in those libraries, in those libraries. I recall me as a student in, in Medina from 1998 until about 2004, we would spend uh, a good portion of our week studying in the library, in the Islamic library in, in Medina. And one of the best things, and that reminds me actually, because the Islamic, you know, the Prophet's Masjid has a library and uh, the, the Haram in Mecca has a library. And when it's time to pray, you leave your books and you go, you pray, and you come back. Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, our, inshallah, our library here in Newark, New Jersey, it's 57 steps from the door of the masjid. You walk out of Imam Ibn Qayyim's library, you make a left, 57 steps, less than one minute, you're in, you enter Masjid Rahmah. You pray, you pray Dhuhr, you pray Asr, you come back to the masjid, you come back to the library, alhamdulillah, very, very convenient. And this is the tawfiq of Allah Azza. This is the tawfiq from Allah because for years, 
we had the idea of opening an Islamic library in, in, in the U.S. But we were looking for a suitable location. And uh, locations were available. They were blocks away from the masjid. But Allah Azrael decreed that we would find a place, a place will become vacant right next to the masjid by the decree of Allah Azrael. So we consider this a tremendous blessing from Allah. And we ask Allah Azrael to accept it from us and to make it of tremendous benefit for the Muslim community locally and abroad by the permission of Allah, insha'Allah ta'ala. Allah knows best.